So this video is for IGCSE Cambridge Business Studies and it's looking at paper one and it's concentrating on the financial topic. Now, because of the direction of numeracy and the initiative of numeracy across the world, it is becoming more and more popular within business studies exams, especially the financial topics. Now, this uh, section is based on the income statement, which measures the profit and loss for a business. I'm not going to spend too much time looking at <clears throat> the information above. Because that's, that's mostly based on the later questions and operations, but we're going to concentrate on table one. So table one, as we can see, it's an income statement with a couple of the key elements actually missing, which you can already guess straight away. It's one of the questions will ask you to calculate it. But the first question asks you for a simple definition. And this definition is a two marker and it's asking you what is meant by cost of sales. So the simple definition is cost of sales refers to the cost of producing the output to sell. But as it's a two marker, I always believe in putting a safety mark, a safety point just in case, um, just to maximize and guarantee the two marks. Now you can do this either via formula, but with cost of sales, I would recommend an example. This is my final answer. Uh, cost of sales refers to the cost of producing the output to sell. One example could be the cost of the raw material to make the goods, and that would just guarantee you the two marks. Now the next question is the calculation question. So it asks you to refer to table one and calculate X and Y. So we'll do that now. So first of all, we're going to calculate revenue. Now we already know the cost of sales and we already know the gross profit, which is unusual because usually um, we'd have the revenue, we'd have the cost of sales, but we wouldn't have the gross profit. But because they're trying to test your numeracy skills, they do it in another way. So you have to rework the formula. So we know the usual formula for gross profit is revenue minus cost sales equals gross profit. But now we have to reverse the formula. We know they're making a positive gross profit of $240,000, which suggests that revenue must be higher than cost of sales. So what we do is we do our cost of sales plus our gross profit to get us our revenue. So as I mentioned before, we reverse our formula. So it's gross profit plus the cost of sale equals revenue. So that would be 240 plus 360 equals 600. Now, just to make sure that that's completely correct, let's use the original formula. So if we do the 600 minus the 360, and that will get you 240, just guaranteeing that you've not made any mistakes and you've got the answer correct. It's really important that you do check over your answer and just make sure that you, you use the original formula as well. And so now considering Y, uh, which is expenses, uh, we've already got our gross profit, we've already got our profit, and again, in usual circumstances, we'd have our gross profit and our expenses and then use that to work out profit. But this is testing your numeracy skills. So the usual formula is gross profit minus expenses equals profit. But what we have to do is we have to rework that formula in order to find out what expenses are. We know that because they're making a profit, a positive profit, that expenses should be less than the gross profit. So if we do the 240 minus the profit of 120, it will give us 120. So again, it's, it's exactly the same number as profit, but we just we use the original formula just in case. And we do our 240 minus the expenses of 120. And yes, it'll give us a profit of 120. Now, this next question is um, an explanation style question, and you will need some applications. So we will have to refer back to uh, the snippet of information in the question. And again, just carry out IDF just to make sure we understand what the question is asking. So instruction is asking you to identify and explain. And just remember, instruction is the command words that they're asking you to do. So within the explanation, you will re require some development. So the direction is for this business. OK, so you have to consider, again, as I said before, the case study at the beginning of the question. And you have to make sure it refers to this question, to this business, and not any generic business. And the focus is looking at why profit is important. So the biggest focus is profit and why it's why it's important for the business. So from reading the case study, I can already pick out a couple of key pieces that we could use as clues uh, for our application within the answer. So the first one is the business is planning to expand. That is going to be a massive focus. Uh, the second one. They are planning on changing to flow production. So therefore that requires um, what well, is going to be much more capital intensive. So we'll need investment for 
the um, the machinery that is going to be used for the flow production. And actually, also, this gives you a bit of a clue in terms of the retained profit within the income statement. So what we need to do is we need to use these type of clues to help answer the question. So the first point I've used is uh, for retained profit. Now, what I'll need to do is I'll give it, I have to give a reason why and I have to develop it and why that's important for this specific business. So my development is uh, as the business is wanting to expand, are only small, and it's said in the case that they're only a small business, it'd be important to grow in a cautious manner and retain profit would hold less risk. Therefore, the greater the profit, the increased chance of expanding. Now, if you wanted to give it a little bit more of reason as to why it told less risk, you could bring in saying that um, there wouldn't be any interest charged, um, there wouldn't have to be any repayments, etc. Now, my next point, I had to be very careful not to go down the routes of retained profit. Many students might say, uh, again, for investment in um, machinery for the flow production, but I, I just think that's really similar to retaining profit for expansion. So I'm going to go down a different uh, route just to make sure that I can maximize my max. So what I've done is a generic reason, okay, but it's an indicator and measurement of performance. Now, because my reason is quite generic, I have to guarantee and make sure that there's application within my explanation. So as I've put, as a business is concerned, expansion, they could want to monitor performance to help decide whether to go ahead with this growth. Currently, their profit levels are $120,000, and therefore in the next year, if they were to measure if their profit levels have increased, it'd give them a comparison for success and help give a more informed information for this decision. And again, the application just to maximize uh, my marks and make sure that I have applied it to the current situation. Again, I've talked about concerned expansion, but I've actually used the income statement of $120,000 in terms of profit to, to, to delve into it further. And just to provide you with some theory, some generic theory based on finance, as you can see here, here's some of the definitions. So revenue, sales during this period, sometimes referred to as a top line. Uh, what it just means is the income from sales. It doesn't consider any costs, it's literally the money that comes in from selling the good or service. The cost of sales is the direct cost of generating revenues that go into the cost of sales, including the cost of raw materials, the component goods uh, bought for resale, and the direct labour cost of production. So the cost of sales directly relate to the production of the goods. Your gross profit is the difference between revenue and cost of sales, a simple but very useful measure of how much profit is generated from every one pound of revenue before overheads and other expenses are taken into account. It relates to contribution. It can kind of give you an idea of the total contribution. So um, how much is the sale of their output contributing towards paying off their expenses? And again, you can use it to calculate your gross profit margin. And just as a reminder, your gross profit margin is your gross profit divided by your sales revenue times by 100 to get a percentage. And then your expenses, or your operating costs and expenses that are not directly related to producing the good or services. OK, uh, again, they, they do tie in, they do relate to fixed costs. And once you've got your gross profit and you've got your expenses, then you can work out your operating profit. Sometimes it's known as net profit. Other times it's just profit, but it's a key measure. So operating profit records how much profit has been made in total from the trading activities of the business before account is taken of how the business is financed. So again, just a reminder, the profit margin is your profit divided by your sales revenue times by 100. And that'll give you an indicator, an idea as to how well they are managing their expenses.